Comcast Series 1, Episode 5, Dividing Continued, There's a Thief Among Us. After a three-week layoff, we just started dividing again. We began with the mirrors. There were only 12, so we each got four. I thought it took a long time, considering we just had to one, two, three, four times. But after each and every time, Claudia wanted to trade. First, she said, wait, let's go. Let's not go on until it's decided. Lisa said, no, she wouldn't trade. Then, sure, I'll trade. Then Claudia thought twice, as if maybe she didn't want to trade. She eventually traded, but the time wasted was incredible. We moved on to Daddy's personally illustrated birthday cards to Grandmother. That went fast. Then on to Blankets. I was sick and not in the mood for any trivial behavior, which is what was going on. There were, say, 18 blankets, and we'd all get at least six. And <clears throat> Claudia was getting technical about one girl getting only one heavy blanket when the other two were getting two. Who cares? I counted to 20 and said, We've been through this. We can't get hung up on whose blanket is heavier or Lisa has two more than me. Just make the comparable piles and go on. We've so much to do. We got through the blankets and organized the bedspreads. It took an hour and we still didn't do the bedspreads. I called for a lunch break. It proved to be the end of that day's work. I'm not sure how it happened, but a reference was made about the cricket candlesticks that belonged to Mommy. Claudia said, I don't know where they are. Maybe your friends stole them. My friends. <clears throat> My friends are not thieves. I left and no work got done. We girls have got to get a move on. I arrived at nine in the morning. I'm always ready to divide in the morning. But the girls don't get out of bed until afternoon. Claudia usually goes out and plays music till dawn. I don't know what Lisa does, either out drinking or out sleeping. She sleeps too much. It makes her lazier. One day, when Lisa was up and Claudia was not, we went to her barn space and snooped around. Lo and behold, we found all this stuff that Claude had denied having. The pricket candlesticks, the sconces, and this dress of Mommy's. Then she brought down this tortoiseshell comb that was with the tiara. The tiara is not there, and she denies knowing anything about it. How can I believe her after all the thieving and lies? Lisa was being sweet and ignoring the main issue. She asked Claudia if she thought she had a problem. Claude says no. Everyone has problems. I was fuming and hurt. I couldn't patronize her. I was open and expressed the way I felt. I don't know if you were caught or the guilt got to you, but I don't know how I could believe you again. You deny any knowledge of these things, and now they show up. She got very defensive and said we owed her these things. For all the work she did when we moved out, I worked just as hard as she did, and she may be working harder now because all of her shit was still in the house. She wouldn't admit that what she did was fucked up. She kept defending herself and changing the subject. I told her that I loved her and I had to say all this because if I didn't, it would rip me up inside. I asked her to look me in the eyes and she couldn't. She really let me down. I feel like I can't trust her. She only brought down the things we specifically mentioned. Lisa had asked her about a jade bracelet that was mommy's. It was the only piece of jewelry she had left after being robbed in the city. Lisa remembered Claudia taking it and saying it was a friend's. At the time, Lisa was young and believed her. Now she remembered it, and after asking the friend about it, she figured that Claudia must have it. She confronted her, and Claude denied it over and over again. After leaving the main house, Lisa and I arrived at my space. There was a Cinderella box. I didn't open it. Lisa did. It was full of costume jewelry and Lisa's jade bracelet. How are we going to believe her? She lies right to our faces. Also, I found out that Lisa did take my silk crocheted shirt and lost it. My romantic shirt that I met Guy in. 
Oh, we wrecked our brains and came up with a list of more things we forgot about, like the chair in the bottle, a little Chinese box with a secret drawer. She denied any knowledge of these things, too. The tenants moved in. They were only in the house for one month when the executors found out that we had rented it. They demanded the money and told us that they were going to cancel the contract. We couldn't use that money for anything except our education. Claudia had opened up an account and put the money there. Now she got it out, gave it to them, and they paid the tenants to leave. The boxes marked CLC go through were moved to the barn, so a lot of the dividing had gone on there. Still, there was stuff in the attic. One day, Claude says she doesn't want any of grandmother's materials. Grandmother sewed all her own clothes and had lots of material. I told Lisa that the two of us would do the material, and then Claude says, okay, let's do the material. First, Claudia said she didn't want this beautiful piece of silk. Then she said she did, and she won it. We figured she was always backing out and reneging because she had the best stuff already stashed away. I don't know what to think anymore. I'd like to believe that she's cleared the air and everything she's taken is back, but I don't. Lisa asked if she had any more of her clothes, and Claude said maybe in her closet. For the past few days, Claude has been up in the barn space rearranging her stuff. Now she'll probably let us look at all her stuff, but has relocated all the hot items. She only brought out the sconces because I caught her moving them one day when she didn't know I was there. Lisa and I continued to snoop through Claude's and found the chair and the bottle and the Chinese box. Claude was on her way up. She came in and looked at the stuff. I started in and I may have overreacted, but I just don't know how to react. I screamed and yelled, you lied to us again. I asked you specifically about that bottle and box and you denied any knowledge of it. How can I believe you? God damn it, why do you steal from us? I hate this. I ranted and ran to the end of the barn to cool off. I came back and Lisa and I demanded she open her locked trunk. She opened it and we looked. It was full of mostly mommy's jewelry. I found a red belt that I once owned and she said I stole it from her. And I said I never stole anything from her. Yes, when I moved to Boston, first, the stuff left wasn't yours. You just adopted it. And it's not like I went into your personal room and took your things. Besides, that's not the issue. You stole from us and lied about it. I forgot about those things. Just the other day, you said you had a good memory. Now you don't remember? How can I believe you? She began to weep and said, I'm pregnant again. We both went to hug her. We told her to check it out now, and then she apologized at least 15 minutes after I told her she should. Lisa said, even though you're letting us look through your trunk, I still think you're hiding stuff. You've just relocated it. Claude never denied it. That's the end of that series. The next chapter will be Complications and sisterly love. Peace.